I'm Rob Kurtz. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to do a fluoroscopic guided lumbar puncture. Um, so just to get you used to looking at the images here, what we're looking at. Um, so we have a lateral view of the spine and we have an AP view of the spine. Um, when you're counting levels of the spine, you want to count from both the top down and the bottom up to make sure that you have consistent numbering uh, to know that you're at the right level. Um, this is a dummy we're looking at so there's no ribs on it so we can't count from the, from the uh, top down. Um, but counting from the bottom, you can see this uh, spinous process right here. Um, this is S1, this is L5, L4, L3, L2. As you go higher up in the spine, you can see that the spinous processes tend to be a little bit lower than the disc level, um, especially when you're at L1, 2, and L2, 3. Um, you can see that the spinous processes actually project lower, so when you're counting, the space uh, uh, below the spinous process is going to be lower down than you, where you, than you would typically expect. Um, so this is the L5 S1 intervertebral uh, inner laminar space. Here's L4 5. Here's L3 4. This would be a good level to go at. Typically, um, L3 4 is kind of the optimal site that we tend to pick. Um, but anywhere from L2 to um, L5 uh, tends to be good. Um, so when I when I do the lumbar puncture, I like to start out a little bit lateral and a little bit inferior from where I want to end up. Um, so this whole space here is the uh, inner laminar space. Um, and I kind of like to end up just to the side of the spinous process at a notch where the uh, lower margin of the lamina meets the spinous process. So I'll usually start a little inferior and a little lateral and kind of aim up medially and superiorly to get into that space. Um, so to get a good spot, uh, I lay the needle um, kind of sideways on the patient, keeping my hand out of the uh, x-ray, um, and then kind of lay the needle horizontally and right up against the skin, but not in the skin. Um, and then I'll take a picture and you can check to see where the needle is right now. You can see it's at the L4-5 space and it's actually at a good spot right there. Um, slightly inferior and lateral to where that lamina meets the spinous process. Um, and I'll move it a little bit just to show you what it looks like when I move it. So you can see I moved it to the patient's right there. Now I moved it a little inferiorly and now I'll get it back to that spot that I, that I like there. And again, I'm just taking single pictures at a time. So that's at a reasonable spot. So once I'm in the right spot, I tilt the needle up and try to keep it in that spot. I'll do the subcutaneous lidocaine wheel here. And then I go straight up from there and put the lidocaine a little bit deeper. I like to remove the needle there to confirm that I'm still in a good spot. So I'll take a picture with the needle out. You can see that it still looks like that lidocaine injection needle is, is in a good spot there, right in the inner laminar space. So you can do that same process with this same process with a, a longer needle now to, to do some deeper um, lidocaine injection. But just since this is a, a sim session, I'll just go straight to the spinal needle now. Um, so for the spinal needle, similarly, I lay it horizontally on the patient, right where that first needle is entering the skin. I take out the first needle. I'll take a picture to make sure I'm still in a good spot. Then I tilt this spinal needle up. You wanna go pretty much vertically at this point. You're gonna end up aiming a little cranially and a little medially on the patient, but just to get some purchase in the skin. So I put the needle in. I'll take a look at the picture to see what it's doing. You can see that the hub of the needle is up cranially towards the patient's head or the, the back of the needle, whereas the tip of the needle is heading down towards the feet. So I wanna aim this a little more superiorly. So to do that, I'll pull the needle back slightly aim it slightly up towards the patient's head and go in a little deeper. Take another picture. So now you can see the needle looks directly on end now pretty much. I tend to like to aim it up a little bit and a little uh, medially. Um, in this case, I probably started a little medial, so I'll just aim it up a little bit. So there you can see now I'm aiming a little bit cranially. You can see the back of the needle down lower and the tip of the needle up higher. So this looks like in a good direction for me. So I'll go ahead and advance the needle directly in along the plane that it's currently going on. Check again to make sure that it's still going in a good direction. So that's nice. It's heading right towards midline, slightly cranially. Um, and I've gone in a decent amount. So now I'll check the lateral view. So here we go on the lateral. And now you can see that it's getting close to the uh, spinal canal. We're just hitting the inferior articulating process uh, at the level above there, not hitting it, but at that level. 
Um, so just keep going in about a centimeter at a time. Don't push too far or you might go too deep uh, right away. So I just went in about a centimeter and I'll check again. And then go a little bit deeper. And there you go. So now we're in the spinal canal. I can confirm again on the AP view. You wouldn't necessarily have to look at the AP view again, but this just shows them directly in midline in the spinal canal, um, just behind the disc there. So that's how you do a fluoroscopic guided lumbar puncture.